Hello everyone, greetings to all. Welcome to our Civil Engineering Objective channel. In this video, we are going to see about very interesting 10 MCQ questions in our Civil Engineering subjects. Now we will see the first question. The first question is, the span to depth ratio limit is specified in Indian standards 456 1978 for the reinforced concrete beams in order to ensure that they asked why the span to depth ratio limit is specified in Indian standards. Generally, the span to depth ratio is very much important point while we are designing the beams. The behavior of the beams is generally depends upon the its depth of the beam. So while we find out the depth of the beam, we have to take in the span to depth ratio limit in Indian standards. Generally, it ensures the, the deflection value of the beam. It limiting the deflection value of the beam while we finally ensured the deflection of the beam is not beyond the, the limiting value so hence it is safe of the beam so according to this question the correct answer is the deflection of the beam is below a limiting value generally we take in the span to depth ratio limit in Indian standards is in order to ensure that the deflection of the beam is below a limiting value Finally, we, we specified it into a safest section of the beam. Now we will move to the next question. The minimum area of tensile reinforcement in a beam shall be greater than. They asked the minimum area of tension reinforcement of the beam. So according to IS456-1978, the minimum area of tension reinforcement is 0.85 BD by FY. So that only they specified in Indian standards. And also the maximum area of tension reinforcement in a beam is 0.04 total grass cross sectional area of the beam. That is 4% of BD. So that is maximum one. So minimum means 0.85 BD by FY and maximum means 4% of BD. So according to this question, the correct answer is option A. Now we will move to the next question. A reinforced concrete column contains longitudinal steel is equal to 1% of the net cross-sectional area of the column. Assume modular ratio as 10. The loads carried using the elastic theory by the longitudinal steel and the net area of concrete are PS and PC respectively. Then the ratio of PS by PC expressed as a percentage. They asked what is the ratio of PS by PC. And also they given the longitudinal steel and net cross sectional area of the column. So let us we consider, we assume that net cross sectional area of the column is BD. So and also the given longitudinal steel is equal to 1% of the net cross sectional area. So we, we, we assumed that net cross section area of the column is BD. So the longitudinal steel is equal to 0.01 BD. So and also they given the model ratio as 10. So PS by PC is equal to 10. While we have to take the PS by PC is equal to 10 they have given. Now we will solve the, the we will substitute and solve the equation that is PS divided by 0 0.01 BD divided by PC divided by BD that is equal to 10 that is model ratio M. So we solved this Equation means finally we get the percentage is 10 option D option D is the correct answer So they asked in the ratio as a percentage not in a numerical number they asked in the ratio of Percentage so according to this question the correct answer is option D So we have to solve this question finally we get 10 percentage of this ratio now we will move to the next question a lysimeter is used to measure. They given the instrument and they asked what it's going to measure. 
so they given the four option infiltration evaporation evapor transpiration radiation so infiltration option a infiltration generally infiltration is going to measured by infiltrometer in filtrometer so not lysimeter so option a is wronger one and option b evaporation is measured by atmometer atmometer so not lysimeter evaporation is also measured by evaporimeter so infiltration is measured by infiltrometer evaporation is measured by atmometer or evaporimeter so option b is also wronger one option c evapotranspiration evapotranspiration is used is generally is, is measured by lysimeter so option c is the correct one and also radiation generally the radiation is measured by using gm tube or georger miller tube so according to this question the correct answer is evapro evapro evapotranspiration so infiltration is measured by infiltrometer evaporation is measured by evaporimeter or atmometer evapotranspiration is measured by lysimeter radiation is measured by gm tube so now we will move to the next question if duty d is 1428 hectares per cumac and base period b is 120 days for an irrigated crop then the delta in meters is given by so generally the formula will have delta is equal to 8.64 b by d while we substituting the b is equal to 120 and d is equal to 1428 and solving them and finally we get the answer of 0.73 option b is the correct answer simply the formula is 8.64 b by d b in days and d in hectares per cubic meter please remember b in days and d in hectare per cubic meter so finally we get delta in meters so please remember this formula is only applicable for b in days and d in hectares per cubic meter sorry cubic so this question the correct answer is option b 0.73 now we will move to the next question the minimum dissolved oxygen ppm in a river necessary for the survival of the aquatic life so the minimum do is must be present in the river in order to survive the aquatic species like fish and various kind of animals so according to indian standards the minimum do is specified is more than 4 that is more than 4 or that's equal to 4 when when we having a river less than 4 of do means that is that is no possible to live the fishes and other aquatic species so the minimum standard specified minimum limit specified in indian standard is that's equal to 4 when we when we get in between 4 to 6 means the survival growth is survival growth is just minimum and we get dissolved oxygen 6 to 8 means the survival rate is the survival growth of rate is maximum and also the river that river gets maximum of 13 ppm of do so when we get 13 ppm of ppm means the survival rate of aquatic life is maximum and also we get the maximum fishes maximum aquatic species that and there is a possible to live the maximum aquatic species so according to this question the correct answer is option c that's equal to 4 the 4 minimum do ppm in a river necessary for the survival of the aquatic life now we will move to the next question when a retaining wall moves away from the backfill the pressure exerted on the wall is termed as they asked what is this definition when a retaining wall moves away from the backfill please remember away from the backfill the pressure exerted on the wall they given the uh, four options passive air pressure swelling pressure pore pressure and active air pressure so now we will see these definitions and finally we decide the answer so active air pressure is means nothing but when a retaining wall moves towards from the backfill and the pressure exerted on the wall is termed as the passive air pressure this is the keyword is towards 
two words not away please remember two words when a retaining wall moves towards from the backfill means the pressure exerted on the wall is termed as the passive act pressure swelling pressure is nothing but the pressure of the the pressure exerted by the soil when absorb the water that is called swelling pressure and also pore pressure pore pressure is also termed as a pore water pressure and it is defined as the pressure of the fluid within the pores of the reservoir or otherwise the pressure of the ground water held within the soil or rock in a gaps between the particle that is termed as the swelling pore water pressure or pore pressure and option d active air pressure active air pressure is nothing but when a retaining wall moves away from the backfill and the pressure is exerted on the wall is termed as the active air pressure that is this is away active means away please remember active means away and passive means towards so according to this question the correct answer is option d option d is the correct answer please remember away and towards these are important words when when the active and passive air pressure definition questions now we will move to the next question effective length of the circular electric pole length l and constant diameter erected on the ground is they ask you what is the effective length of the circular electric pole and also they given the condition they are erected on the ground so according to the similar condition the condition is one end is fixed other end is free so one end is fixed other end is free means the effective length is 2l so this question is according to this question the correct answer is option d 2l they given the constant diameter erected on the ground so one end is fixed and other end is the free when you see the circular electric pole the other end is may not be fixed just is simply kept in it only the ground is the fixer one so according to this question the correct answer is 2l now we will move to the next question allowable shear stress in an unstiffened web of beams made up of steel grade 250 newton per mm square they ask the allowable average shear stress allowable average shear stress so we have to find out the allowable average shear stress that's equal to the allowable average shear stress that's equal to 0.4 fy fy is nothing but 250 newton per mm square while we substitute 0.4 into 250 we get 100 newton per mm square so according to this question the correct answer is option d 100 newton per mm square please remember the formula or 0.4 fy that is the allowable average shear stress that's equal to 0.4 fy in an unstiffened web for beams now we will move to the next question the shape of the stop sign according to irc 67 2001 is so while we seeing in the highway the stop sign generally in the shape of octagonal so octagonal is a shape sign specified in irc 67 and 2001 generally we see in the highway for the stop see, stop shapes so according to this question the correct answer is option c octagonal octagonal is the shape of the stop sign according to irc 67 2001 thanks for watching this video please subscribe our channel for more videos thank you